Hello. It is Wednesday, October 18th, and I have not been here for a while. Um, I had a, a lot happen and wasn't even sure how to talk about it. I was processing quite a bit, and I really still am. So this is going to be, I'm going to try to make this quick, but it's a whole lot. So um, on July 5th, I went to Mass General in Boston to visit with Dr. Steven Greenberg, who many of you uh, probably know is basically considered the preeminent doctor and researcher for cerebral amyloid angiopathy. And I am very grateful that I was able to um, spend some time with him and, and get his perspective. What happened in July, but, but, but put a pin in this, is that he um, talked to me for a while, uh, had me review my history, um, and then said he did not actually think I had cerebral amyloid, <laughs> which was, uh, you know, obviously good news, uh, but it's extremely unexpected and surprising. And I had really um, had such a huge shift and was was processing and, and grieving and readjusting. Um, it, as you know, if you've been watching my other videos for at that point, it would have been, you know, I guess 14 months, something along those lines uh, since my diagnosis. And uh, it was um, kind of rocked, rocked me. I, I have told people it took a couple weeks for me to kind of actually uh, absorb the information and be happy about it. I was not unhappy about the, the, the what looked like a reversal uh, of my diagnosis, but I was just very confused. Um, and, uh, yeah, so, and I, I didn't make a video at that time cause I could barely, you know, rub two sticks together, uh, in terms of even communicating well about it. I was, I was uh, kind of upside down and, and anyway, um, and then, uh, one of the things that Dr. Greenberg recommended, uh, is, a one-year MRI. So I had a few through the course of the first few months of my uh, being ill, and the last one had been September of 22. So my one-year follow-up uh, then was scheduled for September of 23, which was it's going on a month ago since I since I had it done. Um, that uh, MRI. <laughs> actually showed at least one or two new microbleeds in my brain. Dr. Greenberg was not expecting that. We thought that this MRI would not show changes in all likelihood, which would basically close the book on the CAA diagnosis, in which case then I would be left to just pursue other information and solutions regarding my symptoms, uh, which have, have have been rough with um, with the exception of cognitively. For the most part, um, cognitively, there have been a lot of improvements uh, unless I'm like super exhausted. And that's been really, really good. And that started before the apparent reversal of diagnosis, which confused me, but it was was welcome. Um, I still have a lot of other symptoms. I have a lot of um, a lot of migraines. Just came off of five days in a row. Yay! Um, don't recommend that. Uh, and still a lot of pressure all through my skull and my face. Um, it, I wouldn't say a lot. It is consistent. It is low grade, but it is consistent. Uh, in my teeth and my face, my everywhere. And that was my very first symptom when things started to go very, very weird. Had migraines a long time, 
but um, they're just, they're bad, okay? Uh, and digestive symptoms still still happening. They're managed, but they're absolutely still in existence. Um, anyway, uh, Dr. Greenberg now says he cannot rule out CAA. Um, he still does not say that is like a strong likelihood because I have no other markers on my MRI that would normally be seen with CAA, such as superficial siderosis or any major bleeds, etc. I only have the microbleeds that are showing up. And that was why he was, you know, uh, heavily questioning the diagnosis. But now that we've seen there is a progression, we cannot rule it out. So yeah, that sucks. Um, <laughs> it's, it's not uh, what I was hoping for. Um, and it really leaves me in more limbo than I have been throughout the whole thing. Um, because it is not at all clear that this is CAA, but we have nothing else to, to point at. Um, I, my perspective on, um, medicine and the way doctors operate in this system keeps evolving quite a bit. I believe, um, that, uh, most doctors are, are, are good. Most doctors are well-trained, are very intelligent, are good people, um, and I also think that specialization um, is positive for certain conditions. It is a good thing. And for other conditions, specialization prevents the type of really comprehensive analysis of all factors that is required um, for some kinds of illnesses. That is where I am right now. I also think, uh, and this is a generalization, I know there are exceptions and it is not at all meant as a, a dig at all. Very clear, I, I respect doctors. Uh, I think that the population tends to be very um, high achieving personalities who have throughout their lives performed well in formal environments, mostly school, uh, have been praised for their intelligence and for their, their acuity. And that when they are met with Someone like me, whose scenario health-wise is just confusing, does not follow a textbook, uh, is not something they see often or maybe have not seen the particular collection of symptoms before, that unintentionally they sort of shut down. It is, they, they want to solve problems, they want to do the right thing, they want to help people, but when you are met with a problem that is not that easy to empirically solve, where you don't have enough pieces in front of you to do the math equation, so to speak, that there's just this unintentional sort of shutting down and I have told people, for example, several doctors about this weird pressure that's always there, <laughs> makes no sense um, in certain other things, and there are no follow-up questions. I can't remember anyone asking me even a follow-up question about that. I have never had a single doctor suggest what that might be, what we should perhaps look into, nothing ever. Several doctors, all of whom I like. <laughs> so uh, that's where I'm at. I am, um, I've been, I'm going to just say clearly, I, I think I've been, uh, somewhat depressed, which is not something that is um, typical of me historically. 
uh, at all. I'm an optimist, um, but I'm in such limbo and um, part of this, I, without getting into a lot of uh, detail, is um, some perspectives on the state of the world being really uh, scary and broken that um, just means that there's not a lot of center that is clear to me. And I think I'm going to talk about that some more soon, just not right now. I thought, uh, uh, you know, a simple update would, would be, you know, the right thing for today. And I've been meaning to do this for a while and I just got my hair done and my dear Ben kind of went to town and, you know, did the extra cute thing and I have nowhere to go and no, you know, no one to see. And I thought, hey, I can take this moment to um, say hello to all of you and finally post this update that has been a long time coming. Thank you so much for listening. Thank you to a handful of you who subscribed sometime between now and the last post, you know, whatever it was three months ago. Um, please comment. I'm happy to have discussions. I've been a little, a little absent as I'm just dealing with things uh, and, and processing, but I do appreciate the, the conversations a lot. I, I'm glad that um, to hear from a lot of people that this, uh, channel has been helpful to you who are maybe dealing with this diagnosis yourselves or someone you love is. Um, and I only know my own story and, and some things I've read that, that anyone can read, but I think connection is really important. Uh, that's going to do it for me today. I wish all of you the best. I hope everyone is safe. Um, and, um, and just have a have a good fall or uh, spring, depending on where you are in the world. Take care. I'll be back soon.